34 years ago, I was ordained on the very spot from where I have just been presented to you as your bishop. And in just 13 days' time, I will ordain new deacons and priests, a first for them and a first for me. I wonder if any of them will become the Bishop of Salisbury. Who knows? Well, God does, and his grace and love has been, is now, and will be sufficient for us all as we seek his kingdom here and now. Every new vicar at their induction has to give the notices at this point, so I would be no different. Thank you for coming. Toilets are out there. <laughs> and thank you for making this special occasion when the diocese comes together for the first time in over two years. Thank you to those of you sharing this moment via the live stream. For those of you here, immediately that this service ends, you have something to do. We want to capture an image of the diocese coming together. So after the blessing, if I make it that far, we want everyone, and that means everyone, including you, Dad, to move as swiftly as possible to gather outside for a photo for the big picture, as we are calling it. Now, don't be too Anglican about this. No straight lines, no pecking order with clergy or bishops, just a great big family photo outside this amazing cathedral of ours. Children in the front, and those of you who are watching at home can tell, take a selfie and send it in. The Dean has been practicing with his megaphone and he will put us in good order, however higgledy-piggledy that is. Photographers will be high up on scaffolding. And just in case there is any doubt, yes, this is classified as a party. <laughs> and you are allowed to smile. And if you're not from the Diocese of Salisbury today, perhaps from Gloucester or from St Albans, you are in it too to represent those who can't be here. Only after the big picture has been taken do you get your fizz and your ice creams. Let's make this an image of a confident church. Thank you ahead of that, and thank you to all those who have lived this Episcopal vacancy so well. Thank you, Bishop Andrew, for being sponsoring Bishop and caring for all those to be ordained soon. Thank you especially to Archbishop Ezekiel for coming just for this service from our beloved Sudan. Thank you, Your Grace, and please take our love and respect back with you. And one last thank you to someone who has led you during this period in quite an extraordinary way, for which the people of this diocese will always be grateful, and now is our chance. Thank you, Bishop Carey. Actually, she's been doing rather too well, so I'm feeling the pressure. The words of the first reading sum all this up. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. And to go on from the start of that reading. Now concerning the times and the seasons. These are difficult times. We have been living through a difficult season. My ministry as your bishop will always be in the context of the post-COVID era, the post-COVID church. So much has changed and so much is uncertain. It makes us anxious and we have become an anxious society and we have become an anxious church. Anxiety makes us tetchy. It keeps us awake at night 
and it makes us doubt ourselves and everyone else. And yet, and yet, we are still here. This place will always be known as the cathedral that became the vaccination centre. Our churches that were closed went online and worship is now available to all in new ways. Our schools are thriving and our chaplaincies alongside soldier and patient alike give God's love. And across the diocese and soon with the Channel Islands, priests and people are following Christ in their parishes and worshipping communities and making a difference. The kingdom is already here, here and now. As that gospel reading reminds us, we have the talent. We have Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. He is our confidence. What we need to do is recognise that we can make such a difference, that we all share the responsibility for growing disciples, and we all need to be confident in our faith. We will not always agree with each other. Even the Twelve Apostles argued regularly, but we can disagree well and we can stick together because that's what Jesus wanted when he prayed that they might all be one. We have the talent of Jesus Christ among us. Of course, the temptation when the new vicar arrives is to sit back and hand it all over to her or him to sort out. The same is true with a new bishop. There you are, Bishop Stephen. There's the deficit. There's the need for reorganization. There's the worry about decline over to you. In my time in this wonderful diocese, there will be no over to you. There will be no othering. There will be no them over there. There will only be us, the body of Christ, in this place and in each place of our diocese. Each one of us working together to bring in the kingdom here and now. It is a little known statistic that if just one person out of every 50 people in our churches brought one other person to faith each year, the Church of England would be in numerical growth. One person in every 50 of us bringing one person to faith in a year. That only requires 20 of you here today to need to make one more Christian a year for this diocese to be in numerical growth. We have the talent. So let's do this. We can do this. If it can't be done in Salisbury Diocese, it can't be done. Well, it can be done, and it starts now. Children and young people, who are here to help me. You know what your job is. Please take an envelope to every person here in the cathedral now. Off you go. Coming round to you is an envelope for everyone. Please take one, but don't open it yet. Folks, this is your talent, 10 talents just for you, whatever your age or background, the junior choir eyes are out on stalks. There are a thousand people here and there are a thousand envelopes, 10,000 pounds generously donated by two anonymous benefactors. Thank you, you know who you are given in generosity to help bring in the kingdom here and now. Now each of you bears the responsibility for this gift of 10 pounds, 10 talents. This is your talent which is entrusted to you. What will you do with it? Will you bury it in case the archdeacon comes calling? 
Will you save it waiting for the next pandemic? Or will you make it grow so that good can come from this? This is not about money. This is about what you are going to do with this talent which Jesus is sharing with you. Perhaps buy a meal for someone who is making the choice between heat and to eat. Perhaps support your local food bank or give it to the latest fundraising project in your parish. Buy tiles for the church roof. Take someone lonely out for a drink to spend quality time with them. And tell them why Jesus loves them too. Gift aid it at the very least, and perhaps then donate it to the Sudan Medical Link. Club together with others here today and start a messy church. The possibilities are endless, especially for Christians and a church and a diocese with confidence. You hold in your hand 10 pounds of 10,000 pounds with the power to change the world pound by pound. Salisbury's got talent. You see, it's all about us. The Diocese of Salisbury made up of all your Christ-like talents. Only we can make the church grow. Only we can say what we know is great. Only we all together, working together as one body, can embody what you asked for in a new bishop. You asked that the bishop be holy, visionary, transforming, courageous, unifying, visible, caring. This is my vocation, and this is now our vocation. We can do this. This is our time. This is our talent. You now bear the responsibility for this gift. This is his kingdom, here and now. Amen. <laughs>